Hey guys, what's going on? How are you doing? This is Ken Susie here at Fishman Live. Uh, we have a very special guest, one of my good friends, Mark Heilman, which I didn't know his last name was. I'm not going to reveal him yet. I just want to tell you that we are broadcasting on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. So if you want to ask him or myself any questions, uh, then go ahead, go to those. He, the artist will not see your questions. I will be seeing them and then asking them as we have our conversation. So without further ado, Mr. Mark Helmet from Suicide Silence. <laughs> Dude, you're, like, you're like so proper with your introduction. I didn't even recognize that person I was just talking right now. Listen, I'm not I'm not gonna brag, but I, I wore pants. You know, it's it's easy to not like, you know, I'm wearing all my clothes. You're not wearing, if you're wearing shoes, dude, that's crazy. I'm wearing shoes. I'm like all dressed up for this. This is like a big deal. <laughs> and I'm and I really appreciate like, dude, this is the first feed too. Like, guys, if you uh, if you've watched our feeds before, we have a new background created by Tim Dennison. I have a, a DSLR camera, like a new vibe going on. Mark looks good. This is like this is a big deal. This is a very big interview for all of us. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of like my set too. Like I've been doing uh, live streams myself and like I got multiple cameras usually around. Usually you can like tune in on my right hand and shit. <laughs> so, yeah, you're, like why else do I have a microphone right here, you know? Well, hey, in case if you want to sing your songs, right? Yeah, you know me fucking singing all my songs. <laughs> I usually mock my singer all the time. Like he'll be singing, doing his thing, commanding the audience and I'll just be lip syncing and playing like a beetle behind him and people are not into that so <laughs> uh, dude i think i i think i heard muppet mouth for the first time from you like i i, I muppet mouth my own band's music when i'm on stage like i, I realize when i'm like wait i don't know this lyric but i know how it goes yeah, like, yeah. you just yell yeah one time one time um trevor my my singer sang for kill switch and they have a song off their first record, and he, I swore he he sang the lyrics like Howard Jones couldn't sing because his voice was blown out, and he the lyric was like Gandalf. Well, he thought the lyric was Gandalf will rise, but it's not. Oh, it's not oh, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. So you just, <laughs> yeah, you're screaming. It doesn't matter anyway. Gandalf will rise. That that, that sounds like a Howard lyric. You know? <laughs> yeah, big Dungeons and Dragons fan that guy. So, dude, what do you? First of all, you're in California, correct? Oh yeah. I'm and what you obviously we're dealing with this like pandemic and stuff. What what have you been Are, doing to kind of pass the time? Oh well, a shit ton of guitar. I've been uh, I've been I've been I've been giving Skype lessons, believe it or not, which is fucking actually pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I built this whole studio that I'm standing in front of right here that wasn't originally here. <laughs> uh, I I've been running this Patreon, which is super fun. Uh, doing live streams, fucking. I have a tier on my Patreon, and I didn't know I would have so much fun with this, where you can join it, and I'll live stream while I'm writing, and then like I'll let the whoever is involved in it like throw ideas while I'm doing it. So we'll like write songs together, and then I'll perform these songs on my live streams with my patrons, and like. I wrote a song that's all pick scrapes and dive bombs with a kid <laughs> and he loves it. And I fucking love that. He loves it so much. It's so fucking funny. He wrote all the bass and shit and it's, it's just ridiculous. I'm just, I'm, I'm making the best of this lockdown for sure. No, that's awesome. Like uh, rivers Cuomo, I think used to do that a long time ago. He used to write songs with his fans. So I think it's intriguing that you, you have your own Patreon. You're doing that kind of stuff too, as well. Where can people find you in general? Where can they get, where can they find your Patreon? Uh, yeah, on patreon.com backslash Mark Heilman, which enjoy trying to spell that. <laughs> H-E-Y-L-M-U-N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I see you looking at it. You're double checking. Like, let me make sure I know this. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm like, you know, Danvers High uh, spelling bee champ 10 years running, you know, so... I'm still Seriously? I'm still in high school, bro. That's why. That's why I'm winning I, all the time. I feel like you're like a mad genius. Like, your IQ is probably super high. It's like, like at least seven or ten. Is that, it's, it's like room temperature. It's, it's like, like you know. <laughs> yeah, it's at least seventy-five <laughs> degrees. Oh man! Um, so we have a question for you. What What is the very very important in a guitar when he decide to choose one? So what they're trying to say is, what is very important to you in a guitar when you're choosing one to play? 
Well, uh, because, I mean, this is an obvious one for me. I didn't start on a seven-string guitar, and now I'm in this band, and I can't play any of the songs unless it's a seven-string. <laughs> so, like, I hardly ever play six strings anymore. So, I mean, a seven-string guitar is the first thing that I go and look for. But uh, I think a good uh, contour of the neck is probably, you know, I like a, a, I like a good D contour, a nice fucking shreddable fast one. Nice. Uh, make, yeah, you know, Pretty much, yeah. The neck, dude. The neck. But, I mean, we're talking pickups. We're on the pickup fucking YouTube channel. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, tell us about your pickups. Why Why are they so important to you? Fishman Fluence. I, dude, I don't know, because you fucking picked me up one day from tour, and you're like, I'm throwing some of these in your guitar. And I'm like, all right, let's go do this. So we go to the fucking warehouse. You chuck them in this guitar and this guitar. And uh, and literally, dude, like immediately playing a Fishman, I just realized that there's like, basically, if if you're gonna play a chord, oh wait, where did my fucking volume go? Up. Uh, there we go. <laughs> if, you're gonna, if you're gonna play a chord, all the fucking notes come through on it. Whereas, like, I'm not gonna mention what I was using before, but the low end usually will eat up all the high notes on like a, a real like a all. You know, a fucking real chord, a fucking a good ten dollar chord. You know. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the Fishman. I just feel like it's like a every trick pony. The fucking clean on this, dude. It sounds so good. And it's your dad lick right there for you. Your daily, your daily dad lick. <laughs> yeah, when your parents walk into your room and they and they're giving you hell for playing guitar too loud, then you throw that lick out there. Exactly. It fluence is the, the preferred pickup to get your parents to get out of your room. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> no, that's that's great. You've been playing these things for a while and you've been playing ESP for a while. I figured you were gonna say that when you're choosing a guitar, it has to have a camo color. Like it has to be some type of camo. I mean, I'm I'm all about that right now. I mean I I can't I don't think I could ever go back to anything but camo guitars. Look at this motherfucker, dude. Whoa. How fucking cool is that thing, dude? Whoa, thing that's pretty sick. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> Where, when, when, did, when was that made? Uh, I got this one in 20, the end of 2017. Whoa, okay, great. It hasn't even really hit the road because, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, no, it was actually, it was the end of 2018. That's what it was, yeah. Um, yeah, because I took a break from the band in 2019. Yep. So I never, I never had a chance to bring that on tour. Never, it has not played a show, so no one really knows about that one. It's a kind of a top secret fucking weapon right there. Well, let's talk about that. Obviously, like your band has has had so many different changes. Like from the time that I met you, I think in two thousand five or two thousand six, whenever it was when you and I first met. Like obviously, you guys had the you know your singer pass away, you know and. You guys have like went on hiatus for a period of time, and then you came back, and then you left the band. I mean, what has your journey been like this whole time? Um, I think the band has always been like my hundred percent thing ever since I joined, because they were a band before I joined. Let me take a drink of water before I finish this. Yeah, yeah. Are yeah. these bubblies, dude? You know these? You know these bubblies? You know the bubbles? <laughs> yes, I do. I'm very familiar. But um. So, I mean, I joined in 2005. They had been a band for like three years, and they were all like 120% band members. Like, I had never been in a band that was like every single person in the band was gung ho. So, I, you know, I was ready to do that. I just hadn't had the opportunity to do it. So, it was like just fucking hit it running. And um, yeah, obviously, you know, we had tragedy happen. We had, you know, a. A lot of success really early on, you know, and I know you guys have that same kind of thing too. Like, yep. Unearth blew up. Like, you know, so like all that, you know, that the journey was like, holy shit, like this is all happening very quickly. Um, and then, of course, you know, Mitch passed and that was so brutal. And that, that was like this big turning point for me to figure out my, myself, like really, like myself. And like, I went on all kinds of just, you know, inward journey shit. Like I got super, I, I recognized, you know, a lot more about who I am or like let it out more. And like, I quit partying so hard. Um, yep. and really started just kind of like focus like a hundred percent on the music and on, you know, what it is to, to be a professional musician, which I really think before Mitch passed, like I was just fucking ripping and having fun and doing my best to make the band as big as possible. Yeah. But I wasn't, 
I mean, I wasn't doing anything for myself. Like it was all for like this, this, this band. Um, and then really like once I cleaned up and, and all that, like the next whammy for me was, uh, my dad got, uh, we, he got diagnosed with, uh, terminal metastasized, brutal prostate cancer. It was in his blood. It was in his spine. It was, it was really bad. And that was at the beginning of 2017. And uh, that was right when our self-titled record came out, which was fucking bashed and fucking everybody fucking, you yeah. know, really bad, badly received, which is, it is what it is. But in all honesty, for me, I was numb to that shit. I didn't even fucking care. I was like, my dad was, was dying and it was so brutal for me. Like, my dad taught me how to play guitar. My dad is, you know, he was, he was the dude that, like, put a guitar in my hands. So I toured for 2017, uh, tw 2017 to the end of 2018. And that was when I was just like, I'm again, I'm fucking, I'm numb to this. Like, I, I, I can't give 100% to the band like I always have. So, like, the reason why I took a break was just because I wanted to, like, see my dad through the end of his life and not worry about being in a band. Because, you know, Suicide Silence, we are we are 150,000% with the band. Like, every day there's something going on and some decision to be made. And I just couldn't, I couldn't really be present with it. So I felt like you know on that journey for myself and recognize what's best for me like i needed to take that it wasn't even a full year i only really took like nine months off but still that was a long time for me to be away from from all band activity but i think in all you know that that made me realize how much i fucking love it and be able to come back and then we wrote become the hunter which i feel like you know, it was a good rebuttal to uh, to the self-titled record and kind of just like, yo, what's up? We're fucking Suicide Silence and we're, uh, we're that heavy band you like, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you guys wrote obviously a great record. And I think the record that you, you just uh, you highlighted too that uh, wasn't perceived very well, I personally thought it was a great record. Uh, you guys did that with, um, not Steve Evitz, but uh, Ross Robinson, correct? Ross Robinson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that record, that record was great too. So, like, I, I'm a big fan of you guys. I've always been a big fan, but... I totally get it. I never knew the personal stuff with your dad, and I'm sorry to hear that, that that stuff happened with your dad, but I actually just thought you were tired of touring, kind of just leaving, you know what I mean, like leaving the band for a little while just to, you know, get your get your head straight, but I didn't I didn't know any of that with your, with your father. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was, I, my dad, uh, he also, you know, follows the news, the metal news, you know, he was a bit, he was such a supporter of everything I was doing, um, so I didn't want to put it out there. I'm taking a break because my dad's sick. Because he would just see that and be like, "Wait, I'm the reason why you're gonna." It would bum him out, you know. Yep. So I never put it out there really that openly, and uh, I just didn't think it was really needed to to say, you know. Yeah. No, I I hear you. Uh, privacy is obviously very important, and it's cool that you know, you you did your thing and you did it quietly, and then you came back to the band. Having you back in Suicide Silence obviously matters, and I think it matters to all your fan base, but. Going back to tragedy and stuff, and I, I you know, I don't want to like dig too deep into this, but like, Mitch obviously was a good friend of all of, all of ours. Obviously, he was your brother, but I mean, we we got to know Mitch uh, in Unearth very well too, and he was such a great guy with a lot of charisma, a lot of energy, just a really wonderful person to be around. I mean, dealing with tragedy like that is obviously hard. You got a lot of like, I I think it like I understand like I'm not gonna ask you about that time period because it's just it is what it is. But the thing that I want to ask you about is like the press. Dealing with the press, dealing with everybody asking you the same questions over and over about him. What is what was it like? Did how did you not like go crazy? You know, during that time with the fan with you know what I'm talking about with press and people yeah. asking the same questions over and over. Yeah, well, that's a that's strange. I've never really thought about it. I think that you know, just like you said, he was he he had so much charisma and he had so much energy and what he was for Suicide Silence and still is technically. You know, he, he, he there left there was a void, a Mitch void that was left. And like when we decided that we were going to keep going as a band, it was kinda like we all talked about it and we're just like, you know, we gotta fill that void that, you know, Mitch left. Like we gotta do our best to. Like it's probably not even possible because he was just so polarizing. Yeah. But you know, once we decided to, to go back in the band, it was like, what would Mitch want us to do? How would how how hard would he want us to go? So like when it came to press and it came to any of that stuff, it was much more like, we got to fucking light this fire so fucking big again and do it right. Where it was like, it didn't matter, you know, having to talk about it all the time. It's kind of, it, it came with the territory of like, 
yep, you know, we're one of these bands now that one of our members died, and we're going to have to talk about that for the rest of our careers, and we have to be okay with that. And, and you know, a lot of people said a lot of weird shit in that time, you know? Like, you got to make people forget about Mitch, and you got to make people, you know, be like, move forward and, and, and just make yourselves bigger than you were before. But it's like, no, like, that's, that's I think it's an injustice to his life and, and, you know, not something we could ever do. And we are, you know, forever going to be, you're my dog barking. Um, <laughs> we're forever going to be, you know, suicide silence, you know, after Mitch. Like, yeah. and that's, we just got, we have to live with that. Yeah. No, that's a really cool way of looking at it. Cause obviously it's one of those things you don't want to, you don't want people to forget about Mitch. You don't want people to forget about what you guys are currently doing and moving forward. So totally. that, that that means that's that's pretty amazing but yeah man you're i mean obviously you're active you've been doing a lot of cool stuff like you just turned me on to um you're doing a cameo you didn't mention that uh you just cameo you got you got me into cameo so i gotta gotta let my dog out. let your dog out i'll explain what cameo is so basically mark calls me up and he said hey i think you i think you'd be really interested in this and the guy who runs cameo wanted me to hit you up because uh you know he wants you to use the service the service is is basically you go up and Mark's on there. You can literally pay him $5, $10, whatever it is that you have as your set price. But, <laughs> um, but you know, he can wish you a happy birthday. He could uh, help you quit your job by sending your boss a message. He could, he could help you. I, with- I, 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 this is so inappropriate, but I love it. Somebody asked me to ask his girlfriend if she'd give him a blowjob. My oh, favorite man. cameo I've ever done. Oh, man. So, <laughs> so there you go. So there's a lot of interesting things going on there with that. But I'm saying Mark, uh, Mark donates his, all of his uh, uh, earnings from this to a charity. What charity are you, uh, are you uh, giving to? So there's this girl, Jess, and I saw Sonny Mayo, you know Sonny Mayo? Uh, he was in Amen, and uh, he's just rock to recovery, like yes. sober dude. Awesome dude. I saw him post about this girl who had just brought him a mask, and she gave like a little speech of like, I'm dedicating all my time to bring these N95 masks to this doctor that has been my mentor, and she's like helped me in my life for so long, and all this stuff. And it was just like it touched me. I was like, "Damn, that's fucking awesome!" And I had just started doing cameo, and I'm like, "I'm just gonna donate all my money from cameo to this girl, and, and just and just like go for her cause." And then once I did, Randy Blythe did. Uh, I mean, no, I'm not gonna say once I did. All these other people did it, but like it started to cascade, and more and more people started to donate, you know, whatever they could to her. And she's now she's sending them all over the country, and uh, yeah, and I mean, really, it's kind of weird because it's just through Instagram. So like, I would have to look up her handle. Like, it's a, uh, but it's just really like an independent charity kind of thing. So it's it's cool. And she's a rad chick. She's just like so gung ho on it. Yeah. Well, that's really cool because some people like myself, I signed up, and you know, you could pay you could pay me ten dollars to say anything, <laughs> and I'm not giving to any charity. Uh, <laughs> if I haven't got that far, I just started using the app. I'd like to uh, definitely do that. But um, but no, I just thought it was really cool for you to like automatically sign up for the thing and then automatically start donating to a charity of your of your of what you you know wanted to do, uh, subscribe well, to. I mean, with all this freaking you know shit going on right now, like it's. It's hard not to, uh, one, we got to watch out for ourselves as like musicians, like, and being home and locked down and stuff. Everybody wants to make money, but it's like, it's kind of obvious sometimes when everybody's doing these cash grab kind of things and trying to, trying to kind of wartime profiteer during this time. It's like, yo, everybody's going to be fucked for a little while. Yeah. So I don't know. I try, I I just, I thought if, if I'm going to do something with it, I'm like, let's do the cameo. And then I know I'm eventually going to have to figure something out. Skype lessons, Patreon, which I did. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not that selfless. I just need it. You know. <laughs> you're, a better, you're a better man than me. I signed up for it, and I'm like, oh, how do I make like twenty dollars? <laughs> but uh, we got another question coming in, and it's actually not for you, so I apologize. Let me just answer this though. Uh, not a question for Mark, but you're asking, you're inquiring about uh, setting up Fishman pickups, uh, diagrams for fluent pickups, combined with a power bridge. So um, I can't really go into detail as far as answering that right now. But please uh, just contact support at fishman.com and they'll help you out with all your questions as far as how to install, how to uh, getting diagrams if they're not on the website, posted on the website. They're really cool guys. Ask for Derek or Mike. They're great. But uh, but yeah, no, back back to back to us in real life. Um, yeah, so um, 
so I think that's great. Like, so we were talking about doing guitar lessons. That's pretty cool. Like that, a lot. Like some artists don't. You know, not all artists like to reach out and teach people how to play guitar. You're obviously a great guitar player. What got you teaching, and how would someone actually find you if they wanted to learn how to uh, get a lesson from you? Um, what got me teaching was again a reaction to the fact that like this lockdown and this virus stuff was a, just seemed like everybody was freaking out about it. And whenever this kind of stuff happens, even like when Trump got elected, like I try to like distract people and just like remember I'm an entertainer and I'm not like I'm not a politician and I'm I have no I'm not gonna give you news shit. I don't give a shit about that. So like I was like, how can I help people like distract them? Everybody's gonna be home. How can I do something? So uh, I just I started reaching out to people that would comment on my Instagram that were like frequent commenters and see people that like would ask me about stuff about playing guitar. So. I just reached out to people and said, hey, I'm going to start doing doing lessons. If you want one, let me know. So uh, that turned into, you know, four or five students. And then they started talking to people. And I never posted a single thing about it. I just kind of reached out to people that were frequenting my Instagram. So same thing. If anybody's watching this and wants to get a lesson, just uh, slide in my DMs, dude. <laughs> that DMs <laughs> meaning Instagram DMs or yeah, Facebook? Yeah, or Yeah, that's the only social media I have is, is my Instagram. All right, so guys, if you want a lesson from a real big time headlining guitar player, Mark, Mark is on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he hasn't well, got his big time headliner Players Club jacket yet, but he's on his way. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, Phil Dollinger from Music Solutions, one of my favorite stores in the Midwest, he is asking you, Mark. Uh, he loves the dime banner in the back background. Um, he's asking you, what is your favorite Pantera record? Great Southern Train Kill. Nice. For sure. Why? Yeah, I, why is that though? I, I, mean, I think it's just like raw enough for me. Like it's like it, they feel, they really like develop their you know their brutal sound. Obviously, they've been been playing for a while, but uh, the opening of that record is just it's the first mind melting shit I can remember ever hearing. Just like <laughs> isn't like that Seth Putnam from Anal Cunt too? Like guest vocals on it. Oh yeah, uh, it is. And it's just, it's got all the swagger. It's got all the really cool, like, southern licks. And it's just, it just does it, you know? It's badass. Yeah, I agree. Uh, mine is Vulgar Display of Power. Uh, obviously, it's like, it has all the hitters on it. There's a lot of totally. whammy bar in there. It's, it's a lot of good uh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dimebag, I, like, I can tell you a story. Like, like we did that uh, Damage Plan tour with him. And, like, I saw, I got to see, like, uh, Zach Wild showed up halfway through the tour for, for, like, five days and just rode. And uh, I got to see every night Zach and, and Dime just lick back and forth. Like, just not like, not like, oh. like, they were a, a bit, yeah, they would have background music. They just jammed to something. But they just went, like, back and forth, lick for lick for about 20 oh. minutes every night. And it was unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, that is fucking unbelievable. Yeah. I I mean, uh, the I, I think this is probably important in my life somehow. I am such a huge Pantera fan, but I was 14 in 2001, or, or yeah. So I wasn't really going to shows near the end of Pantera's career, and I remember having the choice: I could either go see Ozfest 2001, or I could go see uh, Morbid Angel and Pantera. And for me, I'm like, I'm going to go to Ozfest. There's more bands. You know, yep. I'll go watch all those bands. So I chose that. And that ended up being basically the last time I would have ever been able to see Pantera. So I never got to see Pantera play. And I feel like somehow in like the, the ripple effect of my life that probably affected me in some sort of positive way. Maybe if I would have saw Pantera, I would have been like, I'm on those things. <laughs> you know, but yeah. I, I never got to see Pantera. And, it, and it's and it's. Yeah, it is what it is. And I, now I kind of can connect to a lot of our fans who are like, I never got to see you with Mitch. So yeah. it's like, oh, I never saw Pantera. So It's it's crazy how that like works, how your life goes full circle sometimes. But I yeah, I did the same thing. Um, I had I was a senior in high school, uh, OzFest 97. I remember a couple uh, freshmen, like kids like younger than me. I was like pretty much the only older kid that like, you know, listened to heavy metal in my high school. So they hit me up and they're like, hey, we have an extra ticket. Will you drive us? And I was like, yeah, sure. So they did their thing. I went. I went to go see Vision of Disorder. That's when they played two. Uh, each band on the side stage played two sets a day. So I saw Neurosis, Vision of Disorder, uh, and I believe the other one was. Um, there was another great band. I can't remember, but uh, Pantera definitely played the main stage, and they definitely killed it. They were so good. 
yeah. So I'm going to say, that's a sick brag on my part. You missed out. <laughs> oh, I know it. I know it. I know it. <laughs> um, so I am getting a question um, about your Instagram handle. What is your Instagram handle? Is it just your name? It's just my name. Okay, so at M-A-R-K-H-E-Y-H-E-L-M-U-N. So find yep. him there, DM him. Uh, each lesson's about $5,000 a minute. Uh-huh. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and that's it. How much, yeah. are you how much are you charging? Uh, you know, I kind of, I'm doing 60 an hour is pretty much what I try to do, but I'm also pretty, I'm all right. If someone's like, eh, you know, 50 bucks works too, you know? Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not a stickler on it. Like it's yeah. just figure out what works for somebody. See, the thing about me is that I'd be scared to kind of do lessons because I literally have like six licks and those six <laughs> licks I got down really well. So the lesson yeah. would probably, all, uh, you know, six lessons would cover it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I totally, I know what you mean. Well, I mean, I think that the other thing is, is I, I recognize that a lot of the lesson, a lot of people want to get insight on like being in a band and what that is. So it's like, it's guitar lessons, but it, it, a lot of people want to like hang out, and ask questions for days. So I, I, I recognize that, you know, that's also has value to people. Yeah, actually, I've, I've been asked to speak, do public speaking before at like high schools and this and that and like his, uh, guitar. Uh, like music schools and stuff like that. So what are some of the questions that roll across your path? Like in those lessons, I mean, are people asking about the business side of music? Business side. A lot of people talk about contracts and like re like what a record contract really is and like w how people can get screwed over if they ever got a record contract, like what to look out for. Um, you know, people are real. People always, and I'm sure you know, you get this, people think that like a record label pays for you to go on tour or like people think that you know how you how you uh, get like how the label gets you shows you know things like this. And like, well, that's like not how it works. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, the label can. I mean, back in the old days, the label might have paid for you to get on a tour, like oh, yeah. Ozfest or something like that. But essentially, you're paying for it at the end. The end. At the end of the day. Totally. I know. There, I wish those days. Like I, I, I never really realized this, but like you would have a, a record come out, and if a, a record company could put together or put money into a tour where the tickets were like five bucks yeah. or like super cheap. So like they, they'd be drawing hell of people because the tickets were so cheap, you know, like why, why can't we do that again? Like we got to do that. <laughs> yeah. Label's going to spend more money for us to, you know, pay back. Hook us up, dude. Just blame <laughs> the agents. Blame the agents. Yeah. So what, what label are you guys signed to right now? Nuclear Blast. All right, so Nuclear Blast. Send Mark a, a, a sizable check so he can go on tour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, sponsor, sponsor our virtual tour. <laughs> well, we, we only got a few more minutes left, but I want to, I wanna, like, uh, address everyone and say that Mark took time off because today was actually his day to be a, uh, what are you doing, a Instagram takeover with ESP Guitars, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep. Mark is going to be playing his ESP guitars, his fluids pickups. He's going to be doing all types of sick stuff over there on their um, Instagram channel ES at ESP Guitars. So we want to thank you, obviously, for coming on our live feed today. We, I may, po yeah, Fishman might pop on the ESP uh, stories later and do a quick interview there, or just kind of do a quick hangout. But um, what is it that you're doing for them today? What do you plan on doing for the ESP? I'm um, just kind of I'm telling stories about the guitars I got, talking about what songs that were written on what and what tours were done on what, and I'm gonna just post a bunch of stories and play a bunch of licks and do some playthroughs, and then I'll probably yeah I'll go live at some point today and just kind of freeball it. I don't know, see what it is because I mean I don't really know what it's like to live stream from a an Instagram account that has like seven hundred thousand people so like I, I don't know what's gonna happen am I gonna be able to keep up with the comments I'm probably just gonna rip for a while and see who wants to join my call it'll probably be Ken Susie or <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just having fun with it uh, you know and just seeing seeing what it seeing what it is you know I don't know <laughs> I'll see if I can learn like a suicide so sound silent song by like eight o'clock tonight so like we could jam together you know it's all open and one dude <laughs> Yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the one thing that you should probably talk about is that, you know, the best part about playing ESP guitars and being in Suicide Silence is that you only have to worry about fretware on the top strings 
and then on the lowest string, first fret, right? Totally, 100%. <laughs> it's so, absolutely it's a, it's a quick repair whenever you have something wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God. But uh, listen, man, hey, I'm going to let you go. It's been about a half hour. Thank you so much for joining Fishman Live. Guys, we have some interesting guests coming up next week at the top of the week, so keep your eyes peeled. This is Mark from Suicide Silence. Mark, thank you so much, dude. I'm going to hit you up a little bit later, 8 o'clock. Maybe we'll meet over at the ESP. <laughs> you just told me what time. Like, yeah. Where am I at this time? Maybe about <laughs> maybe about eight-ish. It depends on how many glasses of wine I've had. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for everybody tuning in. And, yeah, I'll see you guys around. All right. See you later, brother. We'll talk to you soon, Mark. Cool.